Welcome back to Behind the Scenes here in the Creepy Crawler's Garage. We're going to do this week a little bit different. There's this hot topic kind of going around YouTube, uh, COPPA or COPA. Well, I'm going to give you my opinion on that. We'll talk about why the RC shop's been delayed so much, and we'll take a quick look at a new project that's in the shop. So stay tuned. So let's start by first just talking about what is COPA or COPA or however you say it. Uh, and it's the Child Online Privacy Protection Act that was passed, I think it was back in 98. It was passed back in the very beginning of the internet uh, when the internet was nice and new and the FTC or the Federal Trade Commission wanted to protect children from having their data collected or information collected on children uh, via websites, okay, or, or uh, the internet in general. Um, the, the, the whole point being, I think it was really for two reasons. One, you didn't want to have predators collecting information on children. Uh, by the way, under the age of 13 is what the FTC classifies as a child. So uh, they didn't want to have predators collecting information on children under the age of 13. And they didn't want to have marketing geared at children under the age of 13. And that's really what I think we're dealing with here on YouTube is the marketing side of it. You don't, you, they, and, and it, by the way, I just want to put up front, I agree. You you don't want to have predators collecting data on children under the age of 13 or anybody, really. And you don't want to have marketers marketing to children under the age of 13. And the reason being, and what the, the Federal Trade Commission said is, a child of that age or of that competency uh, doesn't understand the difference between advertising and content. So if you have a website, or for our point, we have content, we have videos that are gearing advertising towards children as content, so in other words, you have a bad apple in the bunch and a bad seed that's manipulating the, the, the system and just being kind of not good and gearing content towards children as advertising, that child can't comprehend the difference between is this advertising or is this content I'm looking at. Uh, I hope that makes sense. So that's actually not a bad thing. So that's why COPA or COPA existed in the first place. Okay, great. So COPA or COPA uh, covers, uh, is applies to content that is directed at children under the age of 13. Well, that doesn't concern me, right? It doesn't concern all you RC uh, people out there that are creating content. It doesn't concern us, right? Well, yeah, it, it, it kind of does. So COPPA doesn't only apply to content directly made for children under 13. It also applies to content that is appealing to children under the age of 13. So in other words, you could make content that's intended for, for teenagers or for adults, but if it appeals to a child, you can fall under the guise of COPA or COPA. So how do we? How do they define? It's not how we define, but how do they define? How does the FTC define that? How, what is appealing to children? Well, it's very vague, and I think purposely vague. That gives the FTC a little more leeway if you leave it a little bit vague. Okay. So now the applying of it, we'll talk about a lot later. But you can still pressure with a little bit of vague language. Okay. And so the language is. Um, anything that, what can appeal to a child under 13 can be things from music, uh, the language used, uh, the actual content matter, if it's appealing, so it, like bright colors and things of that sort, uh, children's stars, uh, animations. It, it gets real vague, like, what, what, you know, what does this mean? But that does kind of bring us all, uh, I guess, a little bit into the, into the fold. Um, but I'm still not concerned. And we'll talk about why I'm not concerned here in a second, but I want to talk about how YouTube is involved in this. Um, so we all know that there are YouTube channels that are directly geared at children under the age of 13. There's uh, kids toy review channels. There's, there's all kinds of channels that are geared at those children. And we all absolutely know that YouTube has gathered information on them. That, that is hap that's happening. And so that's why the FTC uh, said, YouTube, you can't do that. And YouTube struck a settlement with the FTC in the order of 170, mil 170 something million dollars and some actions they had to take here on the channel, which this is what we've all heard about. If, if, you, are, if you are deemed to have a channel that is geared at channel under 13 or appealing to children under the age of 13, uh, they're turning everything off. Uh, they're turning your comments off. They're turning your notifications off. They're turning, uh, I think, your likes and dislikes off. I, I, they're turning everything off. Uh, basically, they're shutting down your channel. Now, you can still upload, but you're never going to get seen again. So YouTube is required to do these things by the FTC according to their settlement that they came up with. And trust me, or my feeling is, let's be, uh, is that YouTube doesn't want to do this. Uh, it makes no sense to YouTube 
to want to do this. I've been hearing a lot of people talk about, oh, YouTube just wants more power, YouTube, uh, YouTube don't wanna do this. This is gonna shut down some, the largest grossing market on YouTube is children toy reviews and children's uh, content. YouTube does not want to do this. This is being required by the FTC. And quite honestly, they got off kind of light with a $170 million settlement. If you think about, and that brings me to what the fines are that the FTC, so each, each uh, uh, offense can cost, can be fined, the FTC can fine, or a court could fine you up to 40, a uh, little over $42,000. So if you talk about all the offenses that could be levied against on YouTube, you're talking about billions and billions of dollars. So $170 million, that's really just a slap on the wrist. But the big part is they have to change the way they do things, which is what we're talking about with shutting off all comments and all that stuff for the, for the children's channel. So like I said, the FTC can fine offenses for up to $42,000. And that's what I've been hearing a lot of the gripes and hubbub about why people are shutting down their channels is because like, I'm out, I'm not getting fined $42,000 or whatever it is um, but for putting content on YouTube. I don't, I don't have a lawyer. I, I make $50 a month. This, I'm just shutting my channel down. Um, and so this is what I wanted to talk about next is, yeah, the FTC has, and this is, by the way, again, this is my opinion. This is how I see it. Um, the FTC has wording that says you can't do this, but that wording don't ha doesn't have much bite, and it really, in my opinion, does not apply to us, the content creator. And here's why. So, COPPA, like we talked about, is about the collection of data from children. Um, us, as content uh, creators, we don't do that. We don't have the option. YouTube does not give us the option to say, check mark, yes, I would like to collect data on children, or check mark, I would like to collect data on everybody. There is no option. We don't have the option to collect, not to collect. We don't have the option to do any of that thing. So how, what, so let me back up too. So when the FTC wants, the FTC doesn't just give you a fine and then you have to pay it. No, the FTC takes you to court and then a judge has to find you guilty and then a judge, a judge uh, determines the fine that you have to pay. And by the way, I think it's anywhere from $3,000 to $42,000. The $42,000 is the scare tactic, right? Um, but the judge has to fine you that, not just straight from the FTC. So I don't know any judge, or from what I've read and looked at, I don't really think there's any judge out there that's gonna take the case because we don't, we, like I said, we don't, we're not direct, we're, we're not even indirectly really, but we're not directly collecting data on children as the content creator. We are not given the option to not collect that data. I sure as heck would have checked that, I would have checked that box. I would have said, please do not collect that data on children. I would have checked it if I had given, been given the option, YouTube didn't give us the option. Of course, that's why the FTC went after YouTube and after not after the content creator. And here's another little secret just between me and you. The FTC's not coming after us. Definitely not coming after me. I ain't got any money, right? That's why they went after YouTube. You know, Pootie Pie might want to watch out and Ryan's Toy Review better watch out, but, because they've got money. They're not coming after us. We don't have any money, nor do we, I think we have any liability here. Uh, like I said, if I had, had been given the option to check mark a box saying don't collect data on children, I would have check marked that. Um, so I, I'm not too worried, and and I don't think I don't think the RC. This is just my opinion. I don't think the RC community is deemed, or at least the RC community that I, I'm in, uh, is going to be deemed as children's content. I don't think the hobby, I don't think the hobby genre will be deemed as children's content. Now, if you are reviewing children's RC cars, you know, the little toy grade children's RC cars, yeah, now you got something to worry about. Now, you, you might fall, but I don't think we're going to fall into this. And honestly, let's let this shake out. Let's let this shake out and see where it all falls and how it, because in my opinion, uh, this is just my opinion. Again, I watch a lot of gaming videos. Those people are in trouble before we are. People who make Minecraft videos are in trouble before we are. Those are geared to towards children. And you know who that is? That's PewDiePie. That's Captain Sparkles. That's big time YouTubers. And if you think YouTube wants to just straight take them out, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. So I, I don't know. I say let's let's hold off. Let's wait a second. Let's let it settle. 
Um, I think we, I think what's happening is a lot of people are making videos like this one. Um, and then, so it's like, a, it's like a hype, uh, stone rolling down a hill, right? That stone just gets bigger and bigger, and bigger as the next person gets excited, gets even more excited, more excited. I think that's what's going on. Let's just, let's pump the brakes a little bit, especially in the RC community. Um, let's wait it out and see what happens. All right, with that said, let's get to what's really important. And that's this new project sitting behind me that I have in the shop here. Let me scoot to the side and I can show you. So basically what we have here is an AMC Gremlin body. Um, this is the fresh, the fresh cherries. Uh, it's basically a toy grade. YouTube, it's not toy grade. This is a hobby grade. This is a hobby grade. It's not toy grade, uh, but it's a, it's a Gremlin body that we're gonna be using a uh, SCX-10-2 uh, raw builders kit. We're gonna be putting that body on this kit. And of course, the customer also sent all the goodies for us. So we got shocks, wheels, tires, and this is gonna be, this is gonna be fun because what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna turn it into a bar, barn find. So basically, this is gonna be a Gremlin that's been lifted up onto some kind of small tire, tires, kind of like uh, kind of like a redneck truck, you know, kind of a cool redneck deal that's been put away in a barn, got dragged out of a barn, and now here it is, and that's what we're going to build. Uh, this is actually going to be for, for uh, Bull Gear RC. They want this done. Um, he, I guess he liked what I did with, Big, uh, with Ugly Bubba, so this is the next project he wants us to do for him. Um, so this project's actually going to be coming up. And I also wanted to talk about where's been the RC shop. Well, it hasn't gone away. I will say uh, I... Like I said earlier, pump the brakes a little bit with this COPPA thing just to kind of check it out and do some research. Uh, so it's kind of, I kind of stopped for a second. But I do have the next RC Shop episode uh, half edited, I would say. It's about halfway through editing. Um, so it's almost done. It'll be out in the next few days. Probably, I think I'm going to put it out Monday. Um, it'll be done and ready for Monday. Um, but it also, I also slowed down because I had to actually uh, make some money to... Uh, support this. So I've uh, actually been working on my eBay store. That's how I make a little extra money to support the, the shop or this channel actually. Um, and so I, I've been working on my eBay store again. So I thought on the out, out on the outro of this video, I'd go ahead and show you a little commercial I made uh, for the eBay store. So I want to say thank you for joining me. Uh, pump the brakes on the copper thing and I'll see you next time. Check out this ad for my eBay store. Later.